So uh, my name is Boris. I'm uh, half French, half Chinese. Uh, my father's French, uh, born in Paris, and my mother's from Hong Kong. Uh, when I was one, uh, my parents uh, decided to move uh, from Paris to, to Hong Kong, and I've been pretty much all my life uh, living and growing up here. Uh, it's been now close to 30 plus years. Uh, I did uh, go back to Paris uh, for university where I did my Bachelor of Arts in uh, Applied Languages and it was in the minor in uh, Asian Business. And on the last year of my Bachelor of Art, I did a um, exchange program with Erasmus. So I went to Nottingham for one year. And then after that, I immediately went back to Asia where I pretty much did all my professional career has been. And in 2020, I thought it would be it would have been a good idea to start an MBA at the University of Hong Kong. So now I just completed my first year, and then uh, one more year to go, uh, provided that I pass all my <laughs> core modules and also my uh, elective modules. I work for now a uh, American company called Airink. Uh, they are specialized in expatriate compensation. So it's uh, how do you support uh, companies that have expatriates worldwide and how do you support them in terms of benefits and allowances and things like this. And I work for the uh, APAC office that takes care obviously of the, the Asian regions. And um, my position is currently client engagement uh, team lead. So I'm supervising uh, all the client services uh, portion of, uh, of our office. Obviously, uh, uh, 2019, 2020, and nowadays, it's it's still uh, something very relevant it's, uh, with COVID. Um, my, part of my job in the past was to travel quite frequently and, and meet uh, clients face-to-face. -face. And then, obviously, as uh, COVID started happening, uh, I knew that the pretty much international travel was going to be uh, quite little or there was not going to be much... Uh, um, possibility so and um, an MBA has was actually something that I thought uh, to do um, a little bit earlier on in my career I think um, in my early 30s uh, I thought about doing this because um, I wanted something um, a little bit more structured in terms of my education and I wanted to broaden also my professional network but um, at the time yeah when when I decided to do the, the MBA was in 2020 and I thought okay well with that happening with the uh, whole COVID pandemic happening you know I would definitely have to stay in Hong Kong a little bit longer and so it um, went pretty well uh, hand in hand in terms of uh, workload and then uh, being able also to fully dedicate uh, to my study so and then <clears throat> obviously I, I had it's you know it comes with an asterisk uh, you at the beginning we weren't able to all meet up uh, because of the social distancing measures but i think you know even objectively i think that the university did a great job in terms of technology um and then very very early on <coughs> Uh, Hong Kong did pretty well in terms of the handling the pandemic, so we were able to go back to school and actually physically meet back our our our, our, um, our fellow students. So that was the good thing about this. And up to now, everything seems to be okay. You know, um, some unfortunately, some of our some of the students that do that were supposed to commute also from China, either from Shenzhen or from Guangzhou, weren't able to to make it. But um, other than this, you know, it's I think it's still still a very worthwhile uh, experience, and I'm looking forward to going back to school yeah, next month. There was actually a, a good friend of mine, uh, as that happens to be a, a, a husband of my colleague. He did a, a MBA also, uh, but at a, another university in Hong Kong. And um, he did it actually quite a long, long time ago, about 20 years ago. So, you know, he was probably one of the OGs from the, the MBA uh, uh, era. And um, he did tell me that it was a, a very tough in terms of experience, challenging experience, but um, very fruitful. Um, he told me not to, not to put too much expectation from the MBA at the very onset, right, that, you know, you're you have a, a new career or, or you're suddenly expand, uh, your salary is going to exponentially just increase. But he told me that um, it's something that you'll have for for the long run. People will, will associate with you that you have an MBA that, and other people that have done this would, would be able to share that particular experience. And I think he was able to, to leverage his own network at the time and then definitely expand from it. So, um, you know, like I was saying, a lot of people these days is I want reward right away. And I think for him, 
tempering this particular expectation was actually quite interesting and and since then you know i've been mostly absorbing um the mba at, at its full experience um not expecting too much just enjoying the process and, you know putting as much as i want so that the mba just returns back uh and then yeah that's been i think a pretty good uh, advice and for for the probably people that would like to uh, to get into an mba I've got um, a very personal connection to HKU. My father was actually a professor at uh, the University of Hong Kong. Yeah, he was the um, he was the head of the French department uh, at the University of Hong Kong. So, um, you know, uh, we we grew up uh, at the at the university's uh, um, dormitories. Well, not dormitories, but the area where staff uh, pretty much live. I would visit my father. I would go to all the sporting goods ground. So, you know, I I tried uh, to apply for the University of Hong Kong when I wanted to do my Bachelor of Arts, but unfortunately in high school, I wasn't uh, a very brilliant student. So I went back to Paris. But in the back of my mind, it was always, I think it was always in the back of my mind. It's like, I would sure love to be part of the University of Hong Kong. It's, it has such a rich history. It's so tightly knit, you know, of Hong Kong and so yeah when um, you know I, I thought about it and then it, it was always in the back of my mind and then one day I was as the the exact reason why I suddenly applied for the University of Hong Kong after so many years even though it was in the back of my mind was I was just walking down the street and I was talking to my wife on the phone and then suddenly um, out of nowhere there's this tram and that just has the Hong Kong U MBA you know advertisement and I was like I was talking to her I was like Maybe I should I should try it this year and yeah that was that was what happened and then yeah that's uh, finally when things got together when I got the acceptance letter I was quite proud uh, first person that I obviously obviously told was my father so I think he he liked it too. I stopped studying uh, after my Bachelor of Arts. All right? I always thought um, at the time that I would pursue um, a degree, a higher degree afterwards, straight after the Bachelor of Arts. But um, I decided to go work uh, straight away. I, um, I'm not criticizing the university I came from, from the Bachelor of Art, uh, but you know, Hong Kong, the University of Hong Kong does have a, a very high reputation, at least in Asia. Uh, I think it's quite recognized worldwide also, right? Um, if you think of Hong Kong, or at least of a tertiary in the institution, you typically think of the University of Hong Kong. So, you know, to be to be part of uh hopefully like next year if if all, all goes well i get all my my uh my degree and certificate you know to be part of this uh this all the alumni from the university of Hong Kong would be quite i think a personal achievement but also you know i think it could show potential employers companies that hey you you actually come from a pretty uh, reputed uh, reputable university so that's probably, I think, that's uh, going to be helpful. Yes, yeah. Actually, um, that's the thing. It's um, when you um, when you get into the thick of it, when you're working, and then you're you know you're 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 working with the different stakeholders internally, whether it's your finance team or if you're talking to your managers and things like this. And some courses like um, I had corporate finance or even uh, managerial accounting. These were quite useful because even though I knew in the back of my head how things work, uh, just because of the, the experience I had within my particular work, having something more orderly and something actually more academic uh, to, to teach you the basics and the fundamentals was, was quite helpful. And then um, I do have to take a, uh, give a shout out to my business ethics teacher. He, he, um, what he did was, <clears throat> Uh, even though you know the the title might be a bit misleading, uh, business ethics was mostly a reflection or a self reflection. Uh, the way he actually uh, formed or, or 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 made the the whole course was he was taking cases like you would do with other courses, but then trying to try to flip it and then turn it in. Um, inwards meaning that okay how would you react in this particular situation and uh, as a person how do you would like to be defined and uh, what are your core values and, and what are the things that you would like to aspire to and unfortunately you know unless you read uh, books like these or or um or encounter somebody that's you know probably um a mentor or something like this um, you don't really take the time to to self-reflect that much and i think for him 
you know, taking this course and then really honing in into into who you want to be and who you are uh, was very helpful. And then it kind of made me change a little bit on my outlook, on my career and the way I, I work with uh, uh, my colleagues. And uh, I tried to really apply some of the teachings that he'd given us and some of the advices. And um, yeah, it's been it's been kind of, um, you know, um, guiding me a little bit on, on what I want to do and uh, in the next few years and then per, perhaps a little bit later on in my career. So yeah. So for once, yeah, it's, uh, this is actually applicable. I actually feel like it is. So business ethics came in after, I think, a couple of courses that were very um, number heavy. So it was corporate finance, business accounting, and all the things like this, uh, data analytics. And then, you know, as, as you would think, you know, business ethics, you, you think, okay, I know what it means. You know, it's, you know, what this company should do or shouldn't do. And so you, you come with preconceptions in, in your mind. But um, no, he, uh, Professor, uh, um, Professor David Lee, um, was really very smart in, in doing this. He he opened it up, you know, every every session or every course with a, a open discussion, something that happened recently, and would would ask questions, you know, try to elicit um, uh, personal feelings and 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 different type of views, you know, on a particular issue or a particular topic, you know. And um, initially, they're they're the ones that are a little bit cynic, that like me actually, they were like, okay, I don't know. I know what you're trying to do, you know, you're trying to uh, elicit reactions so that we can have discussions. But then then I thought, well, why 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 go against it? Why why try to try to try to see the cynicism into this? So instead, you know, I thought, okay, well, let's let's try to really think, okay, if you were this particular company, how would you react, you know, and what would be the things to support your 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 way of thinking? And having these lively discussions you know it was it was one of the one of the few courses where you actually saw a lot of students you know participating and then giving their opinions and thoughts and and you see how you know you would think that mba would funnel a certain type of people you know with business background things like this and then you would more or less have the same way of thinking but but uh, then you'd see no actually it's, it's completely different and everybody had their points everybody had their opinions which was great and um and what he would do is that um you know instead of having an exam or something like this in the end he would say okay you just i'm asking you just to uh, write a couple sentences do a couple of things you know um that particularly that relates particularly to you so <clears throat> A personal level uh, what are the things that you think are important in your life whether it's your family your professional ambitions and things like this how you're going to allocate uh, time to each of these priorities and how you're going to actually put into action right and how you're going to measure yourself you know and whether or not you've actually achieved all of these goals and um, this cumulated you know and after five weeks of course into a, a pretty much a um, a, a, a self guidebook because you've written pretty much all, everything that's related to you in particular. And then even though you submit it to him, you're actually submitting it to yourself because that's that's now obviously yeah. depending on how much you applied into this particular into this particular piece, this is going to guide you, you know, probably into the next five years and probably even later on if you've actually put the time and thought. And um, yeah, I thought that, you know, it, it was it was quite tough because again, typically you, if you don't try to internalize yourself, you just say, okay, I'm, I'm focusing on work, I'm focusing on family, but you, it's time to sometimes forget a little bit about what you wanted to do and what drives you. And so having this put into pen and paper was actually quite helpful and yeah i and i've already cited quite a, a couple of times <laughs> i have uh, i have expressed my um my deepest uh, uh um purple thanks uh, to this professor because i thought that uh, it was uh, it was quite interesting in the middle of uh, all the numbers suddenly having something to to open up uh, like this In my particular situation, the the person that's been the most uh, uh, that's been the rock and and that's actually been helping me and supporting me all along is my wife. Um, she's the one that's uh, pushed me to to do this MBA. And we recently had a child in uh, 2019, 
and uh, having all this additional uh, family matters to take over and and yet you know being able to care for my child uh, whilst I'm studying whilst I'm you know doing my presentation um, I would have definitely not been able to do it without her and, and I think um, credit is has to be given to my wife especially um, she I know that sometimes you know uh, it it can it can be tough, but um, if you have somebody that's very close and that's able to support you, that's probably uh, something that you can very much cherish. And I think if you go through all these tough times together, it just makes everything a little bit more sweeter at the end. So I was able to definitely <laughs> take advantage of this uh, month long uh, summer break and then reconnect with my wife and my child. But it was. Uh, it was definitely a, a very big support uh, during last year. And then uh, I think I also made some very, very good friends during this uh, first year program. Um, some friends that, you know, that come from completely different backgrounds, uh, different origins and things like this. And, you know, you think at, you know, mid mid thirties, early thirties, by now you'd, you'd have, you know, your set of friends that be, you'd be comfortable with, but it's it's whether it's like you know your your a new relationship. It's always interesting. You always get to know new people. You get to know their background. Everybody's you know has their stories. Everybody's uh, interesting in all their own ways. And and so yeah, suddenly having you know an extra ten friends in your groups, it's it's really great because there's more things to share. There's more things to and and we all have this this thing in common. We're all working and we're all trying to do this MBA together. So having this close group of friends is, is very supportive and very nice. Though. People, you know, tend to think that they know everything and then they come in already with a, a set of um, a pre preconcepts on the, uh, and, and they're, um, they forget that, you know, the whole purpose is that you're, you're opening up yourself into um, an education that's going to teach you a bunch of things that hopefully you don't know. And even if you do know, you know, um, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to, to get a refresher. I'm not going to take credit for this. I'm going to give the credit to Sachin Tipness, the uh, senior executive director for the Hong Kong UMBA program. He, uh, he put it very simply. He said, you put as much into the MBA as you expect to receive it back. So basically, if you just want your MBA as a title after your resume, fine, you know, just go to the courses, get your exam and that's it. But if you, if you put the time into it, if you go to class and you actively participate, if you um, go and meet your students, all your colleagues and things like this. And, and, you know, even though sometimes it might be difficult, whether it's the assignments or the group presentations, and all of this might be, you know, on top of your work might be quite a bit challenging. Just know that as much as you're going to put in, you're going to get back uh, from the MBA. And it's something that uh, might take a bit of time earlier to to acknowledge, but um, as soon as you actually do it, you'll actually see the full benefit of the MBA program. And this is, I think, the most enriching uh, thing about this particular